Hello everyone, welcome you all. In today's video, we'll be discussing the C factor in composites. So let's start. First of all, let's see what exactly is meant by C factor. See C factor or we can also call as configuration factor. It is the ratio of bonded to the unbonded surface area. Now, what do you mean by this? Suppose this is the class one cavity. And in this class one, when we place the composite restoration, that composite restoration will be bonded to this distal wall, this mesial wall, this buccal wall, and the lingual wall. Along with this, it will be bonded to the pulpal floor. So in this class one composite restoration, the composite is bonded to five internal walls, that is mesial, distal, buccal, lingual, and below the pulpal wall. And it is unbonded on the occlusal surface. So if we look at the ratio of bonded, that is five walls, to the unbonded, that is the occlusal surface, this is the C factor, fine, which comes out to be five in case of class one cavity. So if this is the ratio of bonded to unbonded surfaces, we can also say that it is the ratio of internal surface area versus external surface area. For example, in class one cavity, the internal surface area is bounded by all these five walls and the external surface area of the composite is marked by the occlusal surface. So I hope this definition of C factor is clear to you. And who gave the concept of configuration factor? It was given by Carol Davidson in 1980s. To understand the concept of C factor, let's understand what is meant by polymerization shrinkage and polymerization shrinkage stresses. First of all, let's see what exactly happens when composite resin cures. See, whenever the composite resin gets cured, what happens? There occurs a polymerization shrinkage or we can say the volumetric shrinkage. So when there is volumetric shrinkage, what will happen? Suppose this composite is bonded to the walls of the cavity preparation. When this composite resin shrinks on polymerization, there will be the stresses from the bonded tooth restoration interface. Fine. They will tend to resist the polymerization shrinkage. So the polymerization shrinkage, it tends to create the stresses between the tooth surface and the restoration interface, which have the clinical significance. What can occur with these polymerization shrinkage stresses? See, if the bond between the tooth surface and the restoration, it is strong enough, then what will happen? These stresses, they can result in tooth deformation, or cuspal deflection because these stresses they tend to pull the composite inside but the tooth restoration bond is strong so they may result in the tooth deformation or cuspal deflection but if the bond between tooth and restoration interface is weak what will happen these stresses they may cause gap formation between the interface of restoration and the tooth surface this may result in secondary caries and other problems related to this. So from this slide, what can we conclude? That polymerization shrinkage stresses, they can lead to restoration failure. And these polymerization shrinkage stresses, they can be reduced if we reduce the number of bonded walls or if we reduce the ratio of bonded to unbonded walls. That reduction in ratio of bonded to unbonded walls will result in decrease in the stresses because lesser are the number of bonded walls, lesser will be the consequences of polymerization shrinkage stresses. Now let's see the values of C factor in different types of cavity preparations. First of all, if we look at the class 1 cavity, for example, in this class 1 cavity, this is made on the occlusal surface. The composite restoration, it will be bonded to the five surfaces. One is the mesial, then is the distal wall. This is the buccal wall to which the composite restoration will be bonded. This is the lingual wall to which the composite restoration will be bonded. And this will be the pulpal floor. Fine. And after restoration, we see that 
all walls are bonded except for this occlusal surface which is unbonded to the tooth surface so the c factor as we saw it is ratio of bonded to unbonded tooth surfaces so in class 1 cavity what is the c factor 5 divided by 1 which comes out to be 5 which is very high because in this the composite is bonded to five surfaces and only one surface is unbonded so that means it has very high c factor high c factor means more walls are bonded that means more are the effects of polymerization shrinkage stresses so i hope by this you can correlate the c factor with polymerization shrinkage stresses now there are different ways to reduce the polymerization shrinkage stresses in class 1 cavities and other cavities where c factor is high that topic we'll discuss in our other videos now let's see what is the c factor for class 2 cavity first of all let's see what is a class 2 cavity see class 2 is that cavity which is present on the proximal surface of posterior teeth it can be present on the mesial surface or on the distal surface so it can be mo or do or combined mod now let's see what is the c factor in this do cavity of mandibular premolar first of all let's see the surfaces to which the composite restoration will be bonded the one will be this gingival floor the another will be this buccal wall this axial wall and this lingual wall so there are four surfaces to which the composite restoration will be bonded fine so there are four bonded surfaces and the two surfaces one which is seen on the occlusal surface and one which is present on this wall the wall which is opposite to the axial wall that will be unbonded so the ratio of bonded to unbonded that is c factor for class 2 will be 2 so this is the c factor for class 2 restoration either mo or do where there are four bonded surfaces and two unbonded surfaces and the ratio comes out to be 2 now what is the c factor for mod preparation to calculate the c factor for mod composite restoration first of all let's see the number of bonded surfaces if we look in this figure this buccal surface will be the one bonded surface to which our composite restoration will be bonded this palatal surface will be the another bonded surface to which the composite restoration will be bonded and from this mesial side till distal surface this whole floor will be counted as one surface so there are total three bonded surfaces and now if we look at the unbonded surfaces the composite restoration which will be forming the mesial and the distal walls which is formed opposite to the axial wall they'll form two unbonded surfaces and the composite restoration which we can see on the occlusal surface that will be the another unbonded surface so there are three unbonded surfaces so after calculating we can say that the c factor for mod composite restoration is 1 clear so i hope the c factor for class 1 composite restoration class 2 which includes mo do or mod composite restoration it's clear to you now in next video we'll be calculating the c factor for class 3 composite restoration class 4 composite restoration class 5 restoration veneers or root canal thanks for watching this video stay tuned see you in next video take care and goodbye